Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, and in this video, we'll be going over the Physics 2.0 behavior. We'll start with the tiled object that I'm using for the border of the screen. Go to Behaviors, and give it the Physics Engine 2.0 behavior. So to begin with, we have Body Type. There's Dynamic, Static, and Kinematic. Dynamic will move as you would expect a physics object to move, with forces, impulses, rotation, everything. The static object stays still. It isn't affected by any kind of forces, including gravity or collisions. This is what you use for the level itself. Whereas kinematic is a type of static body, but it is able to move if you change its velocity. Next we have some checkboxes. If bullet is checked, the engine will continuously check for collisions, which will improve its response time, but require more processing power. Then there's fixed rotation, which, if checked, will make sure the object doesn't rotate at all. So if you have a platformer character that's using physics, for example, they aren't falling all over the place. And can sleep is a performance saving option that allows the object to rest if it hasn't moved in a while. Next we have the shape of the object. So we have a box, a circle, an edge, and a polygon. And let's set to something else. These shapes will be the size of the object. Polygon is an option that lets you set up your own shape. You can add an image that you can use as a reference while putting in these points. For the polygon, it has to be a minimum of three points, and you can have up to a maximum of eight to create the shapes that you need. These options here allow you to customize the shape that you picked earlier. But if they're all set to zero, then it will just use the size of the object. Now below all of this, we have density, which is as it would be in real life. Something with a low density requires less force to move than something with a high density. Gravity, which can be set to any number, including negatives to get a reverse gravity. Friction, which will slow down objects that are in collision. Frictions can't be negative, and for most purposes, you'll be using numbers between zero and one. Linear dampening is basically air friction. So the higher the number is, the faster the object will slow down, even if nothing is touching it. You can set this to a negative number, but it's a bad idea. Angular dampening is the same thing as linear dampening, but specifically relates to rotation. So the higher this is, the faster your object will stop spinning. Restitution is basically how bouncy an object is. So if you set it to one, it'll be perfectly elastic. So it'll bounce away with as much force as it had when it collided with the object. So you'll generally be using a number between zero and one. The last options in the physics behavior are layers and masks. If you turn on a layer, then that will be the layer that the object is on. If you turn on a mask, then that's the layer that the object will collide with. And for most games, you'll leave this as one one. So now we'll set this to static and this tiled object will make up the outside border of the game. Next, we'll go over to the bouncing ball. We'll leave it as dynamic, set it to a circle, turn its density down, and change its restitution to 1.1, just to show you what it does. So if we preview the game, the first thing you'll see is that the object is ignoring the block, because the block doesn't have the physics behavior. But it's colliding with the tiled sprite and bouncing away, because the tiled sprite has the static physics behavior. And now because I made the restitution 1.1, you can see it's bouncing a little higher every time it collides with the static object. Now let's give the block the physics behavior and make it kinematic. For the most part, you won't bother with kinematic, but I'm still gonna show you what it does so you can use it. So if I create a second object and call it moving wall and put it into the game, and then give it the physics behavior, but make it static, I can show you the difference between the two body types. So if I go to the event sheet and click to add an action, then search velocity, we'll get our options for changing velocity. Make note that this is physics engine 2.0 and not the basic physics engine because that is deprecated. So just ignore that one. So we'll click to give the object an angular velocity and then we'll add two to it. And then we'll do the same thing for the moving wall, and then we'll change its linear y velocity by adding two as well. 
So now if I preview the game, you'll see the object with the kinematic body moving and falling out of screen, whereas the static one stays in place. So now let's get rid of that, and to show how to apply this to a game, I've changed the blocks to static, and the moving wall to kinematic. Generally you'll use kinematic for moving doors and things like that. But I'm going to use it as a paddle. And suddenly, after I give it some controls, and suddenly, after I make it stop, and suddenly, after some more tweaks, we're playing something similar to Brick Breaker. The blocks are just breaking based on an animation change that we did back in the Changing Animations video. Honestly, this version is kind of bad. If you go in the example section of GDevelop, you can find an actual good version of this game, and I'll put a link down below. This has been a tutorial going over the basics of the Physics Engine 2.0. There are a lot of actions and conditions that give you a lot more things you can do with the Physics Engine, but we'll cover those in another video. For now, be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next time. I've been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.